music reaction uh, time. Yeah. Oh, today we got something a bit different and definitely very controversial. Mm. Mm. Why? Because I'm going to pose the question to our Chris Clefford fans. Do you think Chris has what it takes to win America's Got Talent? Because we know he's good. Mm -hmm. We know he's got the talent. He's won before. That's right. He's got a lot of fans. Mm -hmm. But the last week he was on America's Got Talent. Ooh. I didn't feel the emotional connection on that song. I felt. It's a song choice that matters. But what do you think it will take for him to win this competition? Now, before you answer this question, I'm gonna lay out the land for you. I'm gonna share with you everything we know about Chris and his key competitors. After this analysis, you tell us what you think. Does he have a legitimate shot to take home the crown for this competition? You gotta kinda take a step back here. You know what I'm saying, right? We all have our biases. It's easy to just say, yes, for sure he's gonna win. Mm -hmm. But let's take a look at the information we got here. All right. Let's know all these ingredients. Let's take a step back here and try to understand what is the market opportunity for Chris, all right? Mm. In other words, mm. what's the big picture for him to ultimately take home the crown? Mm. And when we say take home the crown, we're talking about winning America's Got Talent. Mm. Now, I think an interesting question should be posed here, and that is, does it actually matter for him to win? Right. You know, what is his main objective beyond America's Got Talent? When you think about it from that perspective, then we don't have to think about it whether or not he has to win, but whether or not he can get what he needs out of a contest like this. Mm, interesting, interesting question. What's important is to think about the bigger opportunity, which is how to become a global sensation, to right? To get known. To everywhere. get known around the world. America's Got Talent is the immediate task at hand, mm. right? It's the immediate opportunity to level up. Being a global sensation is the goal. And so that means that he has to go and find his fans. That's his objective, Okay. right? It's not to be worldwide known to everybody, young and old, right? He needs to find his niche and he needs to find those fans. And he right. needs to leverage America's Got Talent to do that. Which is what he's doing right now. That's what he's doing, right? Which means that... It really doesn't matter if he wins or not, Oh. right? If you think about it, past winners, while oftentimes we'll get the accolades, the people that come in second and sometimes even third will even They're go the on. They're the ones. Yeah, they can go on to so be. Famous. They can become famous as That's well. That's right. Winning is not guaranteed to give you that success. And in fact, what happens with a lot of these reality TV shows is that the winner is contractually obligated to do a number of promos, a number of different things that lock them in for the next year so that they can't do anything else. So in other words, if Chris has his own ideas, if Chris is already an established artist, it means that he's being taken away from promoting himself to promoting AGT in many ways. Right? And so we hear a lot about AGT and how the winner goes on to Vegas and does a Vegas show. The interesting question is, is Vegas really the right opportunity for Chris or not? I think that's the important thing here. Now, if you think about what AGT is actually providing here is an opportunity for exposure. Mm. That's how he's gonna develop his fans. The reason why he wants to advance isn't to win, but to come back every week to perform in front of people to win over new fans. And he's gotta capture those fans. Mm. Every week that he's on, he gets two shots of being in the limelight, mm. the performance and the results. Right. So if he goes all the way to the finals, he gets that exposure. And I think being in, honestly in the top three, maybe even top five is enough for him. He doesn't have to be number one. Don't lose sight of what the bigger opportunity here is because if he doesn't win, it doesn't mean the end of the world. The truth is he got what he needed out of this competition. Let's get into what is the problem actually worth solving here if that's the framework, that's the market opportunity for uh -huh. Chris, all right? Now, the problem we're solving here is to get more exposure, which means that you want to get to the finals. It's not just being on TV. Just because you're winning over fans at the moment, they're watching the show, if he's not actively getting them to subscribe to his YouTube channel, 
to buy his music, to follow him on social media, uh -huh. those viewers are, are gone. So I'm gonna share with you some charts here to give you a sense of how impactful being on this show has been for Chris. Mm. We can see. There's actually a website out there called Social Blade and it can track how fast you're growing on YouTube. That's something I use to track our channel. And if you take a look at Chris's channel, right? He had a relative level of inactivity for a long time. It didn't mean that he wasn't posting. It meant that he wasn't getting a lot of subscribers. He was getting about 10 subscribers, 20 subscribers a day. And then suddenly it rocketed to a couple thousand. Nice per day on his first performance, America's Got Talent. That's how big of an opportunity he is. However, it dropped. It dropped. And that usually, that, I mean, that makes sense because the first big performance is a big reveal, but what he hasn't done and he's missed this opportunity is ever since then, he's not posted up new stuff up on YouTube. And because of that, he's going to continue to drop unless he engages with this audience. New content means more subscribers. And it doesn't even matter what he posts. He doesn't have to create new music videos, new Perfectly. kitchen sessions, right, right? right? Anything, old performances, even vlog, behind the scenes of what it's like being on America's Got Talent. And it's only until recently, boom, it just shot up from average views per month from about 1,000 to 2,000 to about 35,000 a month. Now I'll give you a perspective on this, all right? We get more views than him on a monthly basis right now. Mm. That doesn't make any sense. For someone like Chris, he needs to do a lot more with his YouTube channel. Mm. That's gonna be key. Oh, a lot of work, a lot of work, Chris. Okay, so the other problem that's worth solving here, and the thing that I think he needs to continue to focus on is, he needs to showcase what kind of artist he's all about, right? Even though America's Got Talent is gonna give him a very wide swath of potential to reach, Think of them as, it's like cold calling as a salesperson. You can talk to everybody in the world, but you gotta do is isolate and figure out who is likely to become your fan, right? So that means you have to be very clear about the kind of product you're selling, which is Chris, right? What does he stand for? What is he about? What kind of music does he write? And if he's not actively promoting that, he's missing it. And so I think just from his performances and just from the song choice, it's pretty clear he has a particular niche mm but I think he needs to go a lot further in terms of be able to really emphasize that. All right, and the final most important thing here at this particular juncture, the problem that he is most daunted with is how does he get fans to vote? And you could break this down to four different things that are really important here, right? We all know this, but I think breaking it down is really important. Uh -huh. First is song choice. I know song choice matters a lot. That's right. Song arrangement, I think, is something that's also worth emphasizing here because mm -hmm. it's not just about the song that he sings, whether they recognize it, it's what flavor does he add to the song? How does he interpret it that makes it uniquely his? Otherwise, it's just a karaoke performance. Right, cover, another cover. It's just cover. another cover. And I tell right. you, you can get famous online just being a cover artist. It's not the same thing. Chris is on a whole nother level. All right, and the third thing is stage presence, mm. which I think has been somewhat of a mixed bag for Chris. He's definitely improved over the years as a stage performer. I remember mm -hmm. when we were watching him on Swedish Idol, right. at times it can be pretty uncomfortable watching him without his guitar. Yeah. He's really found his zone there. Alrighty. And the last thing is he needs to tell his story. Mm -hmm. The more the fans latch onto that story, mm -hmm. the more likely they're gonna vote for him. And not only just vote for him, but as the competition progresses and as more artists get knocked off, you know, fans will have to pick another artist. And the point right. is to win those fans over. And they may not be as familiar with this story. So he has to constantly tell his story every single week. Story is important because the story then, yes, is so you important. connect with that artist, right? Yes. There's a lot of ways to interpret that, but I like to use the word story here because I think as entertainers, that's really what you're providing people. You're trying to get people interested in your art and invested in you by telling that story. Mm -hmm. And I think every piece that you create is an interpretation of something from your soul, mm -hmm. right? That's how you develop a long-term fan. That's right. You know, the third thing that I think is important to analyze here is, is something that they call market validation. In other words, based off of his performance to date, mm -hmm. and he's been on singing three times on All America's Got Talent, has he proven that he has something here that the audience is clamoring for, right. that is winning over fans. Mm. 
all right? And so let's break down each of these performances and see what is about it that worked and what is about that didn't work. It's an interesting breakdown, right? So let's let's go ahead and deep dive on this. Okay. All right. His first performance was Imagine, uh -huh. right? A beautiful song from John Lennon, and the reaction for the crowd was absolutely stunning. It was yes. amazement, like oh, all yes. of us were. I think that was honestly his best performance to date, mm -hmm. right? I have to agree. And he did a great job building the song up, keeping the audience captivated, and it was just a great song choice. Right. In his second performance, he did something that was original, something like me, a song that he wrote. Mm -hmm. And it's a risky choice because with original songs, you have to hope that one, if the song is really good, it has right? A great hook. It's got a, it got a great hook. And then second, you got to hope that within a two minute stretch that you can convey that hook right. to the audience. So I went back to watch his performance and the audience did stand up, the judges did stand up, but I think a big part of why he did so well in that round is because Brad Paisley was there, who is a country music artist that has much love in America. And Brad Paisley spoke first basically showering him with a lot of praise. And I think set the tone, I think that set the tone for all the other judges and for everybody else, because they don't want to make the guest judge look bad. Chris is a very much along the country slash folk type of singer. So we knew that Brad loved it. Exactly. So yeah. this song I think did really well because it had a great buildup. And it isn't, I think, the most compelling song choice because no one knows it. With Brad there giving the extra push, he progressed. Hmm. Last week, Cold at the Altar, which is his latest song choice, another original another song. Another original song. And this one had a lot of mixed reactions. Very controversial because two judges didn't like it. Hmm. As I went back and looked at this, you know, I can see where they're coming from, right? Because hmm. it was a slow buildup. And that's right. a lot of what's... Chris's songs are like. They're a slow buildup, much more intimate. The way he did it felt like he just cut the long version of the song to a short version, but he didn't do much to reinterpret it to be ideal for the show. Mm. And I think as you take a look at all these different choices, it's not just about the song choice. It's about how you interpret the song in that two-minute window to win people over. I don't know where they have time, please. Jeez, crazy analysis. That can only be one thing. Yeah, we got the lay of the land, right? That's all we've been talking about so far. I think that's important whenever you're doing these kind of analysis. Now, there's one more piece here that we have to take a look at when we take a look at the lay of the land, and that is the competition, because it tremendously affects what Chris should be doing next. You can't deny the fact that at this point in the competition, there are two front runners that Chris has to contend with if he wants to be at the top. Uh -huh. And that is Cody Lee and VM Beatable. Those are the two most popular contestants right now that Chris needs to. I think he has to take a look at them to understand one is what is it about them and their fan base, but also how does he compete against that, mm -hmm. right? What does he need to do? So let's take a look at them, right? V Unbeatable. V Unbeatable is this dance troupe from India, high flying, death defying acts. You should definitely go and check out our videos and reactions to them because it, it, it's mind blowing stuff. Oh, yes. And I think that's pretty key to understand what they do gets your adrenaline pumping mm. right it gets you to go whoo that was amazing gets you out of seat you want to clap and that makes you want to vote and that's one of the key ways to get people invested in you to get them so pumped up that they mm. want to vote for you right right now the interesting thing about v unbeatable is that they have a huge following but a big chunk of that is from india people. right and exactly a lot of people in India, I mean, it's the most populous country in the world. So if you go back and look at just about every V Unbeatable video that's out there, including ours, including ones at AGT, a lot of comments are from India who are so proud of what V Unbeatable is doing. Right. Now, if you take a look at that, there's some good and bad about that. One is it propels their videos to go online and climb the ranks, right? They get a lot of views because of it. But the downside is, they can't vote in this competition, oh. right? They're not US based. So just having the views, just having the fans that are in the US becomes a challenge for them. They have to constantly sell themselves, which means they have to sell their story to the US audience. Now, the good thing about them is that 
they've been having amazing momentum. I would say they've been one act where they've had dramatic improvement every single time. Yes. It gets more spectacular. And if you look at Google Trend here at this data regarding how well they've been improving, you can see there are spikes here when they performed. And beyond the first performance, which did really, really well, and that's usually the case, the first performance will wow people, makes them go viral. Their second and third and fourth performance after that have all increased dramatically. Mm -hmm. That is a impressive sign that they are gaining momentum, that they have the potential to win it all. You could tell, look at that. Yeah, the spikes every single week in terms of what people searching on continues to climb at a very rapid rate. All right, so Cody Lee. Mm. Now Cody Lee is an absolutely amazing phenomenon mm. that is, I think everyone is pretty much predicting to be the front runner, the likely person to go on and win it all, right? Mm -hmm. And his whole thing is very different than VM Beatable. It's not about pumping up your adrenaline, but it's about tugging at the emotions, mm. which is the second way about getting fans to invest in you and out to vote. Right. Because when he performs, you are brought to tears. You're emotionally basically wrought, right? Mm -hmm. You feel it. And that is the other way. And those are the two ways that get you the votes. Mm -hmm. You have to be ultimately one or the other or potentially both. Mm. Right. Now, the thing with Cody Lee is that and where his advantage is that he has a large U.S. following. Huge, right? Because he's U.S. based. Mm. And I've seen this with our videos. As an example, right, when we post up a V Unbeatable video, a lot of our viewers are from India. Mm. When we post up a Chris video, a lot of the viewers are from Sweden. Sweden. It makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Every Cody video, the majority is from the United States. Mm. So he has, in many ways, a home field advantage here. Mm. The voters. Well, the, voters. the voters. That's what's key. Now, if you take a look again at Google Trends, Cody's uh, trending is very different from VM Beatable. Oh. What happened with Cody is he got that huge spike in that first week he performed. Right. But he got the golden buzzer. Oh. And I actually think the golden buzzer is not in your favor if you want to establish global presence mm. because you skip weeks of performance right right you go straight to the, to the next round right so cody missed that opportunity because he got the golden buzzer that and makes so sense. his exposure decreased it took a little while to build back up mm. but the other interesting phenomenon when you take a look at people's interest in cody is that interest in him only comes from when he's performing Cody is not a typical recording artist. He doesn't have a lot of songs that are recorded online. He performs in a band, right, that he's familiar with on a local level. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff really isn't online for people to see. So it's difficult then to want to become a fan of his in the long run, a fan that can follow him from song to song over the years. Mm -hmm. And that shows here. And so... The challenge for Cody is actually the opposite compared to Chris Clefford, which is Chris Clefford has momentum coming in, becoming a global sensation, while Cody is a fan favorite of the moment. Mm. All right, so now we saw Cody Lee's and V Unbeatable's like Google trend, which gives a sense of like how many people are latched onto him. Right. Well, let's take a look at Chris's. Okay. All right? Chris oh. here, like many people who enter this competition, had very little awareness. Now, this is interesting because Chris had a massive following in Sweden, but it just gives you a sense of like on the global market how much of a difference this is. And what you see here is after Chris had an amazing run, first performance, his interest doesn't drop down to zero like right. Cody Lee does. He's able to build upon that because right. yeah. he has a catalog of content from before. He's been on shows before and that helps keep the audience interested, they have things to see. To watch. Exactly. The key here for Chris is to be able to continue to leverage this. He's actually doing pretty well in the US. He's actually doing better than V Unbeatable in I the see. United States. So in other words, he has potential to take V Unbeatable's momentum building and propel himself to be number one by the time this whole thing is all over. While Cody already has dominance here over everybody, the question is, can Chris come from behind and build that momentum? Mm, right, right. All right, so let's go back and take a look at this map of the world, because uh -huh. this tells you where people are popular. Cody has dominance right now 
in the United States, in fact, throughout North America, which includes Canada and Mexico and even South America, yeah. right? Really popular in these countries. Yeah. While Chris is really popular primarily in other English speaking parts of the world, Europe, Australia, South Africa, and actually some parts of Asia as well, and including places like Indonesia. So this gives a really interesting breakdown of the challenge Chris has to face. He has to start convincing the American audience mm. he is a worthy contender. Right. He's got a lot of the rest of the world in the pocket, but they can't vote. Mm. He has to win over the American market. That's right. All right, y'all. So that's the lay of the land, all right? These are the three things I think that are really gonna matter here as you make your assessment of, does he have a legitimate shot to win? Now, what do we think? Well, I'll tell you what, make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna tell you what we think in a follow-up video. Right. And I'm gonna break it down just as comprehensively as I've done with this video of all the key points like factor into our decision. And I will share with you the details of how he can pull this off. Oh, you guys need to subscribe and tune in because I'm excited, I'm excited. I wanted to know now, but I guess we have to wait.